Hello, everyone. It's great, great to be here. Um, I'd like to start off with a demonstration. I'd like to have everyone please stand up. And on the count of three, I want everyone to go like this. Okay? Now, wait. One, two, three. Oh, cool. Standing ovation one minute into the talk. All right. It can't get any better. All right. My name is Bruce Barnett. Um, I've been in, uh, doing a lot of, uh, I'm a computer scientist. Some of the work I do isn't quite as exciting to people around here. Uh, things like data provenance and security ontologies and stuff like that. Um, but I'm also a magician. I've been a magician for 40 years. And uh, I have, uh, maybe some of you have read my tutorial on SED. I don't know. Anyone? Number one on Google. But um, anyhow. So, I, so I, I kept thinking about the similarities between what magicians do and what hackers do. And there's actually a lot in common. You know, there's, first of all, you ever notice magicians are always wearing black, which seems to be, you know, dominant color here. They also, they like to shock people. And we've got a few interesting people around here who are in that category. But mostly, they have secret knowledge. And secret knowledge is the key to both uh, hacking and to be a magician. Because uh, with secret knowledge, and you go against something who has very rigid uh, assumptions, it just blows right through it, and you get profit. <laughs> got to put the formula in there somewhere. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the magician's uh, tool toolkit, you know, the different things they use to accomplish the illusions that, that they're doing. And then I'm going to talk about the similarities between uh, what magician's tools are and the, and the hacking tools. I'm going to talk about uh, basic psychology and some advanced psychology, and then I'm going to give an example, putting it all together, saying how I would apply it if I was hacking into a, uh, into a, uh, a company. So first, let's talk about actions. Um, like the, the the first one is important to know is is the is the feint. It's the um, it's the oh here here's the pencil. See that was a feint. I knew exactly where the pencil was. I was just pretending I didn't know where, you know. And that's a very that's, so. Um, and you see this in, in uh, hacking. Like you go to websites and saying, we're now scanning your computer for viruses, and you have see little dials spinning around and all that. It's not doing anything. It's just a feint. You know, and the next thing is the uh, is the bluff, where you you know where they're basically saying something that's just an outright lie, and that's typically you know like the website saying, oh, we've just detected a virus on your computer. Please install this software. So uh, now the the third the thing is very important. This is this is the the most important thing is the is the slight. You know, you, know, you take something in like this, and you know it just. Um, Oh, there it is over here. <laughs> it's, it's no big deal. It's just, a, oh, there it is again. Okay. Um, it's, just a, it's just a secret action with some technique um, that magicians use. And um, a lot of times it requires a lot of practice to really be good at this. Some magicians will spend 20, 30 years just doing one slight and doing it really good. Um, also, slights are less valuable the more they're known. If you know what's happening, it's not as effective. Uh, also, slides can be worth a lot of money. Uh, there's a, and there's an underground economy uh, for magicians uh, where they uh, barter secrets with each other. Um, so what's the equivalent in this in hacking? It's the exploit. It's a zero day. You know, all these things are, are true. I mean, a really good exploit is worth quite a lot. A uh, speaker yesterday said they're worth like $100,000 and up for a really good exploit that works 100% of the time. You know, um, and also again, if you know about it, it's not as valuable anymore. And there's an underground economy as well. So, um, and, and the fourth uh, sort of uh, action is uh, t uh, timing. You know, uh, that's very important in magic to get the timing just right. Um, and that can be used applied to hacking too. For instance, if you're doing a port scan, you do it over a long period of time, like over months or so, or probably would not be detected. Now, props. Props are the objects magicians use. And some of them are just regular objects. But they're special objects, too. First of all, there's the gimmick. The gimmick is a secret device. You don't see it, but it has a secret function. You know, for instance, if I had um, a piece of tape, a sticky thing right here, and I could, you know, I could then 
to put this pencil right here and have it stay in my hand. Now, um, now there's also another type of gimmick where you don't actually have a special gimmick, you use another gimmick that has a secret function, which is what I did here with my finger. You know? So, um, so and the equivalent in hacking, or the gimmick, is the rootkit. You know, it's hidden, you can't find it, you can't see it very easily, but it has a secret function. Now, uh, the next thing is a gaff. A gaff is a device that's, that has a, that you see, that has a function that you're aware of, but it's been modified. If I take a pencil and I stick a magnet on it or a thread, it becomes a gaffed pencil, okay? Now, and what's the equivalent of, of this in hacking? That's like a backdoor or an Easter egg function in, in some software. All right, now the, the, the third type of object which is used is a fake. For instance, if I have a rubber tube and I paint it yellow and stick a, an eraser on it, it would, wouldn't really be a real pencil. It would just be like a rubber tube that looks like a pencil. You know, but, um, but, it's, but that's, that's what a fake is. And what's the equivalent of this in hacking? Well, that's like a Trojan horse or a man in the middle. It's not really the website you're going to. It just pretend to be the website and things are passing through it. All right, now there's people. But first, I'd like to do a demonstration. Um, I, need, um, I need three people to have a dollar bill. Anyone has a dollar bill? You'll get it back, I promise. Okay, there's one. I need, I need, uh, I need two more. Come on, come on. You, Nick, you, just stay, stay right there, okay? Two more people, okay? Come on up. No, just, just, no, I'm not touching that bill. I'm not touching that bill. Okay, I want you to, to okay, look at the bill so you're looking at the president, okay? So he's, so he's right in the middle. Then fold it in half, right down his face, so the president's on the inside. You got that? All right, now fold it again, the same direction. Uh, again, okay. Now fold it top to the bottom, fold it the other way down. Okay, and, tr and, and now uh, give your bill to someone else so you don't have your original bill anymore. All right, now I need, um, I need someone else, let's see. Okay. Uh, Oh, let's see, now I'm going to make sure I have all my uh, stuff here. Okay. I need someone else to, um, here. Okay, whoever, whoever gets it. Okay, pick, up, pick, pick it up and point to one of these three people. Or just tell me which one you want. First, second, third. Number two? All right, why don't you come, come on up. Now, um, I, I was going to bring a, a longer pole here. I'm not going to touch the bill. But I'd like you to put the bill in, in, in this clip. Now, I was going to have a longer one, but TSA had issues with it. So just put the bill in, in the clip. Yep. All right. And um, the, the rest of you, you can sit down. You've, you've got a bill. You're all set. OK. So what I'd like you to do is why don't you come over here, step over here, and, 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 uh, and hold this up real high. OK. Now, I am going to, I am going to try to read his mind. I'm going to try to determine the, the, the serial number of that bill, all right? Okay, please open up the bill and look at the number. You got it? Yeah. All right, now, I, now I want you to, to, did I get the number correct? Yes. Thank you very much. Oh, you people are so gullible. No, no, no. Go, go, no. Uh, actually, why don't you read? Why don't you read the, the the serial number of the bill? Step right up here and tell everyone what what it is. F seven six zero eight two one five five I. Thank you very much. And you can keep the bill. You're all done. Thank you. All right. So we're going to talk about people. And of course, the first one you're all thinking of, a shill, a stooge, a secret accomplice, you know. Now, I made, made things a little bit interesting to you because maybe all three of those people were accomplices. You know, who knows? 
Um, now, for uh, and of course, in hacking, this would be the insider threat, someone on the inside. Now, for this to work, you know, you really have to trust the person. If you don't trust the person, you know, or suspect the person, then this might not work. Um, so that's very important uh, that if, if they're if you would have trust in the person, the more you trust them, the more likely you're going to be deceived by them. Um, there's an also interesting little ploy uh, that's been used in the magic on a stage pr production where they had the magician was the main character and they had uh, a protagonist, the enemy, someone who hated the magician. And the magician, um, you know, put something, uh, you know, on a table and covered it up with a cloth and his enemy, the, his nemesis, says, I don't believe you. And he picked up the cloth, says, yep, okay, it's still there. And then, boom, the thing vanished. And, uh, and what really happened is the person who was the enemy was the one who was a secret accomplice. He stole the item out when no one else, no one knew about it. So this can be, this can be applied in uh, hacking too. For instance, if you have someone who's um, uh, um, uh, uh, an enemy of someone else, and if they say something about this other person, you're more likely to believe them, even though they might be an accomplice. But you see, this is also how it works. You know, the, you know, the, you you get email, and it's more likely to believe it from a friend than a stranger, and so on. So um, now, the second type of uh, accomplice is an unwitting accomplice. This is like social engineering. That's that's what I did with the with the say yes gag. You know, I had him go along with it. Um, you know, for, for you know, uh, just for some fun. And you see this happening when um, sometimes social engineering they call someone up and they give a big. Um, you know, one of your colleagues is visiting our site today and they're having problems getting access to the network and he's kind of busy right now, I'm trying to help him out. Could you please do me a favor, you know? So you see that happening a lot. Um, all right, and the third type is the patsy or the fall guy. So if you want to know how, you know, how that bill worked, just, just ask our, 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 patsy, our patsy here. So uh, I'm sure he'll tell you how everything all worked here. I'll, don't ask me because I'm not going to tell you. All right, now let's talk about psychology. The most important principle in magic is naturalness. Uh, the professor, Di Vernon, is a, a noted expert in magic. He always stressed how magic had to be natural. Uh, Tarbell talked about it, a bunch of other people talked about it. If you're doing something and it doesn't look right, like, I could have the best light in the world, but if I had to go like this when I'm doing my slight, it's going to be suspicious. So you have to do slights so they look completely natural. Um, you know, and that's, that's really the most critical thing. In fact, uh, someone, says, someone said, all magician, all magical effects have a flaw. And the stuff they do around it helps disguise that flaw. Because they really can't be natural. I mean, if they were really that good, they could just, you know, point to someone, do something, boom, make a, make a car appear, with waving their hands and all that. They always have to disguise it and, and do things around that to, to, to make it look somewhat natural. Um, so, but, um, but what if you can't, uh, what if you can't be natural? What if you can't do it, um, can't be 100% natural? Well, one of the first things a magician tries to do is they try to make it look as natural as possible. For instance, if you have an exploit and it generates three log entries, if you can eliminate three log entries and, and go down to two, that's better. If you go down to one, that's even better still. If you have no log entries at all, no alarm, stuff like that, that's the best. So that's the goal, is trying to you know, re reduce anything or remove anything that is unnatural. Um, if you're gonna have a, use a buffer overflow, if you pick uh, you know, padding of all A's or something like that, the log files might show that up and that'd be more suspicious than putting something that real file names involved in there. Uh, there's even uh, someone, uh, a Mason had an interesting paper on shell code using the English words, which is a, thought, it's a very interesting idea. So, um, and if you, can't, um, if you can't eliminate it, you try to find ways to hide it. Uh, I was listening to Paul.com uh, podcast and they had uh, Mike Murray and Mike Murray were talking about how they used uh, D instead of CL for Oracle. Uh, and you, they were able to trick a lot of people into thinking that was the legitimate website when they tried to make it look as similar as possible. So that's again the same sort of principle in doing that. Now, and if you can't do that, sometimes you just can't do it. So what else can you do? You can make something that is unnatural become more natural. 
And uh, you can do this with like some sort of contrived justification. If you come up with some sort of situation that help explain this, and maybe even adding things to it to, to make this sort of thing seem more reasonable, you can do that. Uh, social engineering does this a lot. Uh, another thing you can do is repetition. Um, if you do something once, it's suspicious. If it happens a hundred times, you know, and nothing happens, it's not so suspicious. For instance, if you had a, an exploit, which you may want to do that, that you couldn't, you know, that would leave log entries, you could, for instance, create a tool that you let script kitties run that lo looks like probes for this vulnerability, but doesn't actually do anything. And if people started using these tools, they would start generating alarms um, on, on systems, but they'd realize, oh, it's just that script kitty tool, it's harmless, it doesn't do anything. They might not notice it if you have a real exploit that has exact you know, signature uh, as a script kitty tool. Um, all right, now here's, here, let's, let's do something else. I'm gonna do a coin vanish. Okay, I'm gonna take this coin, I'm gonna move away from the mic a little bit, I am going to make this coin vanish by tapping it with my, my wand here. On the count, count of three. One, two, three. Oh. Um, the coin didn't vanish, the pencil vanished. I stuck it behind my ear, see, you, you weren't looking for that. See, you thought the coin was gonna vanish when I, well, <laughs> at least I still got my pencil. All right, that, um, thank you, thank you. There were no slights whatsoever in that illusion. All it was was misdirection. That's all I used to do that. I just made you look somewhere else when I was doing it, and that's how that particular effect works. So misdirection, what is it? It's a way to control uh, someone's attention so that they look over here when you're doing something secret over here. Now, um, now, how can you do this? One of the most uh, important things you want to do is you want to find something that they're, they're going to be interested in, you know, something that uh, they're going to want to take a look at, something that appeals to them or you know, has, has a great interest to them. And it's hard to tell exactly what it is because there's so many different cases, people are different and all that. I mean, you can, you know, you can do things uh, that might, uh, you know, uh, magicians a lot, a lot of times would have uh, an assistant in a skimpy outfit and she might drop something and bend over to pick up something and all the men would be looking at what, you know, her bending over while this magician's doing something secret over there. Those are examples of things like that. It all depends on what the crowd, you know, what, the, what appeals to the crowd. Um, and I've seen this in, the, in some uh, email and Facebook things that says, oh my God, you won't believe what she's doing in this picture. And you don't, may not realize this, wait a minute, there's something kind of hinky about this thing here, but the topic is such as say, I gotta take a look at what this is, and you click on it. So, um, so and um, now that's, um, that is, um, okay, there's different kinds of misdirection. The first one is the directed misdirection, where you say, look over there, you know? And of course, that doesn't always work. Um, you know, it has to be, um, it has to be something logical that makes sense. Um, you know, you can use certain things like, um, if, if, if it doesn't make sense, it might be suspicious. And if you're suspicious, you may not, you may not look where they want you to look, you may look elsewhere. So it's really important to make this make sense. Uh, you know, so you, you have to find out what attracts their uh, attention. You know, you know, Lady Gaga or Justin Bieber or, or free iPad. You know, that gets people's attention a lot. They start, they stop thinking about certain things. So, um, now the other thing you can do is, to, is on the uniqueness of the event. Some things that just sort of grab your attention. Uh, hackers have uh, set off fire alarms when they've broken into systems. They might be able to get access to the HVAC uh, that's, you know, attached to a computer network and manipulate the environment that way. Uh, or they could uh, set off another attack. Uh, Sony was just, mentioned recently how they had a very sophisticated attack that was happening while another attack was occurring and that's why they missed it, if you believe them. Now there's another kind, um, sort of, which is uh, a little subtler, it's called discovered misdirection. In other words, you don't tell them about it, you wait for them to discover it on their own. So it's sitting there ahead of time, 
waiting to be discovered. And when they look at it, they say, oh my, and they look at this. So um, it can be a very useful, but you have to control the timing because the timing is not always under your control. If you can do certain things to make them want to go there and look at it, that, that's what this will do. So um, I'm going to give an example of this later on. There's also another kind of misdirection called uh, constrained misdirection. Uh, 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 Penn and Teller do something where they throw something over someone's head and he doesn't know what happened to it and everyone else does because they're controlling what he sees. That, that can happen, uh, you know, it happened a long time ago. I'm not too sure how it, happened. it ha happens right now, but if you can control the environment, maybe get an administrator to have remote access into a machine that you control, they may not see the things that, you know, that they want it, they think they're seeing because you're controlling the environment. So that's a possibility. Um, now, uh, now here's some more advanced uh, psychological techniques. I was just mentioning the misdirection, but there's a lot more magicians uh, can apply to, a, to uh, you know, to fool people. All right, one of the most useful techniques magicians use is they want to encourage a false conclusion. Um, magicians have these things they call sucker tricks and it's designed so that when it's being performed um, it's pretty obvious to, to you what's really happening and you you know you start seeing you know you start thinking what it's going to be. Um, uh, they do this a lot with kids you know the kids will they want the kids to yell out and saying I know what you're doing you know turn it around it's on the other side whatever and of course at the very end the, the magician reveals the fact that well no you're wrong this is this is what really happened they turn the other side and something completely different or um, they'll make you think that um, you've someone's hidden underneath a table that's surrounded by a curtain and then they pull away the curtain at the last minute so you know oh they're not under the table you know so this is um, this is really really useful. It's um, you have to basically get them to uh, you know experience a false premise. Uh, a false alarm is also uh, another other thing that can, that can do this. So that if you can uh, generate an alarm, um, you might make them think something's happening when it's not. So that's that's another useful thing to do. You could you could repeat that, and they would also then learn to not trust alarms if you kept if you're abusing that. Um, some examples, uh, the dark market uh, sting, uh, the guy was pretending to be involved in illegal activity. Uh, another case I, I saw on the, on the SANS mailing list, someone had a shockwave uh, file and it had, um, it had malware in it. It had a virus in it, but it also had the ICAR test virus in it. Why would a file have a harmless uh, you know, a virus and a real virus in the same file? I think it was the, someone trying to be uh, deceptive. Um, another good thing that magicians love to do is they like to be able to use multiple methods. So if I can do the same effect using three completely different concepts, um, it, it becomes really hard for someone to figure out what's going on. For instance, let's say I was doing a, a trick and it required a trap door, okay? But I could also do the same trick, but this time I didn't use a trap door, I used a mirror. And, if I, and they looked identical. You could look at, you could, if you saw both versions of it, you'd say, I've seen it more than once. And he didn't use a trap door and he didn't use a mirror, so I don't know what he did. But meanwhile, it's like when I'm not using a trap door, I'm using a mirror. When I'm not using a mirror, I'm using a trap door. And that's very useful. Um, so if you have multiple ways to do certain things, it makes it really hard to figure out which one it is that's really happening. Um, and it's, it's a very good psychological thing because they say, I, you know, once they say, well, it's not this, I know it's not this, they tend to want to believe that again. Um, so, uh, oh, another thing that uh, some magicians have done, especially when they're working, um, trying to uh, steal market share from another magician, is they will come up with an illusion that um, maybe is an improvement over someone else's illusion, and they'll tell people, says, Unlike some magicians, we don't use a trap door or whatever it is, you know, uh, and they purposely reveal the technique that other people are doing to improve the illusion of what they're doing. And that could be useful too. We'll talk about that. All right. And another very useful thing for magicians is a switch um, where they, um, they're using something, a gimmick, or I'm sorry, a gaff, using something that's gaffed. Um, and 
what they do is they let you examine it and then this uh, regular object and they switch it for the gaffed object or maybe they, they do it the other way around where they use the gaffed object and they switch it for a regular object and then hand it out, let people take a look at this. So that, you know, that's very common. Um, and you can do this in hacking too. If you had like programs, you could switch programs in and out very quickly or programs that self-destruct after they accomplish certain things. So there's ways that, that this can be done as well. Now, um, oh, the fake re 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 revelation, I mentioned this before, uh, and I'll give an example of this uh, in a little bit in this, in, this, in this scenario. Okay, all right, so, okay. I'm, all right, so let me summarize some of the stuff we talked about, and then we're gonna give you the scenario. See, I, I, first of all, I believe there's a lot of things in common but I, what I do not think is a lot of people have applied the, the psychological techniques of a magician as they're hacking as much as they could. And I'm going to try to describe this and, and we'll call them, sort of call this person a magician hacker, I guess. I don't know what else to call them. Um, so let's pick a scenario. We've got this company and um, they have some very valuable intellectual property. Uh, I'm thinking, for instance, they could have a, um, a server that has all their source code of everything on it or some sort of database with very valuable financial information or something. But they also have very good security. This, you know, the XYZ company has really good security and uh, they got sharp people. Now the hacker's inside, he's already gotten into the network and he has ac limited access to it. Um, but, and also one more thing too, if this intellectual property is stolen and they learn about this, it may not be worth as, as much money. It might be, for instance, trade secrets that if you can steal this without them knowing it, it's more valuable. But if they know that it's stolen, they might do something else. And also, in this scenario, any obvious uh, attempt to extract information and send it out on, onto the internet would be detected and, and blocked. So. The initial thing of what might be done uh, can't be done. You have to do something else. So what would the magician hacker do? All right, let's, let, me, let me build the scenario a little bit. First, we're going to have a patsy involved. This is unlucky Lucy. She is the administrator of this, of this server, okay? She's responsible for it. And she's smart. She's really alert. She's smart. If anything strange happened, she detects it. She makes sure it gets stopped, all right? But let's say the magician hacker has partial access to um, some of her files. Maybe she's got a directory that uh, she owns that he can put some files into it. Um, and also, um, she also has some files that under her control that can be propagated throughout the network. You know, maybe she's got some sort of startup batch file or something like that that people use or, or something along those lines. Um, all right. and. Um, so what does he do with there? He sort of scopes it out, finds the patsy, and then first step he's gonna, going to uh, go to some web forums and create uh, an account using Lucy's name and create some interesting little pieces of information there which we'll discover later. Okay, all right. There's also Innocent Ivy. You know, she's gonna, something's gonna happen to her too, but, uh, but uh, this is all like setting up the discovered misdirection thing. All right, so the hacker has to do a little bit more work. He's going to create some files on a public facing uh, web server. Um, but these are files that are not indexed on the main page. So, uh, search the spider might not find them. You have to know about the URLs to actually see these files. So these files are created uh, and, the, and they're available on the internet but no one knows about them yet. Um, also, one more thing to sort of make this uh, work is they have to make sure that since some sites do incremental backups you want to be able to do a full backup but you want it to you want to be able to make sure that the entire database is, is going to be backed up so you may have to do something to make sure the size of the incremental backup is big enough so that it's going to be able to do a full backup now this file that Lucy um, is uh, is distributing throughout the company it's got a zero-day virus in it. You know, no one knows about this exploit yet, 
You know, it's undiscovered. And in fact, it, the virus doesn't do anything. It just sits there, might propagate. It sits there pretty quietly, just waiting for the right time. All right, next, the hacker generates a faked press release regarding the XYZ company. They are now announcing they're going into adult services. And goes on to quote about the CEO, uh, you know, John Smith, and says, there's a real need, you know, there's real money in here, and heck, I love pornography. So, now you can imagine what might happen. Well, let's go through, let's see what happens here. Um, so then the hacker makes a phone call to Innes and Ivy, okay? Said, um, uh, I was on this URL and I found something on your web page that I don't think should be there. Um, and notices and, and lets uh, you know, Ivy know about this. And she checks it out and she reports it to her, to her manager. Says, oh my God. And, um, and also the magician at the same time reveals the, de de the details of this new zero day. Here's the exploit, here's how it works. Maybe says, I've seen this in the wild or something like this or whatever. It just, they, they put all the source code, put all the information out there to let people know about it and let the hackers play around with it. So probably pretty soon you'll see malware using this stuff and all that. Okay, so this is all, this is things that we're doing the bluff, we're doing a unwanted accomplice, we're doing a creating a false conclusion, revealing an inferior method by others. So we're doing all that at this point. And we still haven't gotten to the good part yet. Okay, meanwhile, the CEO hears about this press release. He's obviously not reading Twitter first thing in the morning. Someone has to tell him about this stuff. And of course, he's going to be outraged about this. They're going to, you know, the blogs are now talking about this press release because, uh, you know, it hit the news. They're talking about this. Uh, um, and um, and uh, so they publish a press release in response, you know, that say denying this whole thing. It's just, you know, it's, it's just a fake press release. Don't believe it. Okay, but then they learn he's got porn on his website. Hmm, so we might have to issue another press release that sort of contradicts the first press release, you know, saying maybe, the, you know, to, to figure out how to get around it. He's going to be sweating bullets on this. All right, and maybe the hacker has some, um, they, they found some of the, the screenshots of what these, some of these, uh, you know, uh, what these pages are and publishes it on Twitter and stuff like that and let people see what it is. So it all gets around. They're going to take it down quickly, but, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be there. And it might look like something, you know, like there's the, the CEO saying, this is good porn here, you know, or I personally guarantee it, you know. So um, he is going to be pretty upset. Okay. And, um, oh, at this point, um, now virus, the antivirus companies are now creating signatures for that malware that we just talked about, that zero that just came out. So this is the first round of chaos. Let's go a little bit deeper. Okay, so now Ivy gets some random email saying, um, you know, one of your people, Lucy, was talking about XYZ's company and their new porn stuff, or new porn content, and how she thinks it's a really good idea and all that. We just want to let you know. Is it Lucy? Lucy did this? You know. So anyhow, they... Um, they, they check it out, and, and lo and behold, in Lucy's file, there's um, some JPEGs that were on the website, and maybe a rough, release, a rough version of that press release on, in her files. Uh-oh. She, she, uh, Ivy reports this to the chief, and Lucy gets fired. You know, there's stuff like this. They just want the people out of there as quickly as possible, you know, just hush-hush, hide everything, and, and all that, and get the person out of the door as quickly as possible. Um, but now the blogs are talking about this too, you know, about the porn, uh, the, the porn pages that were showing up and how it, you know, it sort of counters the first press release that came out. And the virus signatures are now updated um, and propagated throughout the, you know, uh, you know, throughout the systems to say, here's the new, uh, you know, virus that we're putting a signature into the system and they're all getting updated. All right. So this is sort of the second round of chaos. So what happens now? Okay, now the hacker decides to publish a second press release, faked one from the XYZ company saying, 
We now have a policy that all our press releases are going to be cryptographically signed, and the public key to verify the contents of, this, that, of, of the press release is on our web page over here. And sure enough, there's a public certificate that's on the web page. They can go to it, they can validate it, and they say, "Oh, and by the way, you know, we are getting into the porn business, and this is cryptographically signed." And that the CEO has some um, issues with the current direction. All right, and. And by the way, the antivirus package just sort of says, oh, we have hundreds of machines are now infected with a virus. This is the third round of chaos. Shall we go on? All right. So now the next thing, this virus, it does have one thing this virus does. It was waiting for the right time. The time is now. It decides to make con uh, connections to random websites on the internet. But in the HTTP GET, in the header, they have this big uh, new header in, the, in there that contains all this random uh, information, random characters, um, very large files. Now, you know, and actually it really is random information, but from an analytical point, you can't tell the difference between something that's random and something that's encrypted. So as far as anyone can tell, there's, this is sending encrypted information. And all the different machines are connecting to all these web servers on the outside and sending megabytes of data to you know, tens of thousands of websites out there. Um, and also, the antivirus package found some files in Ivy's directory. And it got triggered and notified. They look at them, and these are a little bit different. So this is the fourth round of chaos. Okay, finally, okay, here's where we get to the, the, the final stage here. So in, in Ivy's directory, they find source code of this virus. Hmm. Also, they found some more of these adult pages and on there. Hmm. And the, and the press releases are also in Ivy's directory. So Ivy's now fired. So um, this is the fifth and a uh, round of chaos. Now let me summarize what's, what's going on here. We've got this complete circle of chaos here. First of all, they got a PR nightmare. You know, they keep coming out with these press releases and their press releases uh, counter, counter, uh, uh, contradicts other press releases and they don't quite know, seem to know what they're, going, what they're doing. They're trying to handle this, trying to, to smooth everything out and they're, they're not quite too sure how to handle the situation. They also have this big virus infecting all these machines on the center you know, all over the place. They've got to deal with that. You know, where's the virus? How's it propagating? What's going on? They might trace it down to the fact that, that maybe it was, uh, you know, Lucy that was doing it, everything that makes sense, but then maybe it's Ivy. Uh, she was involved too. So, and the third thing is they got all this, you know, gigabytes of traffic going out to the internet that's encrypted. What is in there? It's, maybe it's their intellectual property. Someone's doing all this stuff. They better figure out what this is and stop it soon. Um, now the fourth thing they have to worry about is they, now they have two cases of wrongful termination. I mean, the CEO is not going to care about this. They just want the, you know, the people gone. You know, they don't want to care about you know, excuses. What's that? Oh, okay. It says wrongful termination. I don't know what, what it is. Well, I got chopped off. Okay. Um, all right. And the, and the next one is, um, well, you know, now people are going to have problems with their, their management. They're not quite comfortable with what's going on because uh, Ivy and Lucy got fired. People know these people. They can't understand what's going on. Rumors, rumors get spread. You know, people can't make up their mind as to what's going on and who's to blame for that. It seems like they're, they're blaming people, you know, for no real reason or maybe they are. It's really confusing. And, and the fifth problem that they have is the fact that well, the server, the administration of the, the administrator of the server is now changed. They lost the primary and they lost the secondary, so they have some other person who's not familiar with that server. Now, you think they're going to care about that last one? It's just not going to be something that's high on their radar. So, now we're going to complete the illusion. Now, like magic, if you know, once you know what's really happening, you're going to be disappointed because it's so simple. That's how magic is. But it's not just the, the, the effect it's done, it's the whole creation of the illusion with all of the misdirection and all the psychology of the whole thing. That's what makes magic interesting. But the actual, what really happens can be very simple. So, so what we're gonna try, remember, what we're trying to do is trying to steal the information from the database and not be detected and be as natural as possible and leave no evidence. 
So this is what's done. It's pretty simple. Well, we're going to do a full backup of that database. And using uh, some DNS uh, cache poisoning or something like that, it goes to a different website, a different uh, external server, um, maybe in a different country or whatever. But they may not notice it. Um, and when it's all done, it sort of cleans up all traces of it. You know, the DNS uh, cache will be cleansed. And, uh, and as far as they can tell, everything looks perfectly fine. So therefore, you have profit. Thank you. <laughs> All right, now, um, just to summarize, I want some things to talk about. Press releases should be signed. Uh, I think detecting this sort of technique is going to require a new sort of philosophy, a new ways of thinking about things and new motivations, understanding it. Uh, the obvious answer may not be the correct answer. It seems like it's the obvious one, but that may not be good enough. Um, and unrelated events may not be unrelated. They may, may, the whole thing uh, may be part of a, a, a big, uh, a big uh, package. Uh, forensics are really important, and um, people like computers are assets, and they're vulnerable to denial of service as well. So um, in, in, the, in the DVD and on my uh, web page, there's, gonna, there's an 18-page paper. I give a lot of detail to all this stuff. I've been collecting information about this. If you have any questions, contact me. Uh, and I'll update the papers. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>